This is the Monmouth Planning Board meeting July 13th, 2023. And Stephen O'Donnell, the chair, um, have a quorum of members here tonight. Rick Grant, the alternate, did one of the alternates did contact me today that he's working out of town. But, um, we have all the regular meetings and one all members and one alternate here. Um, everyone looked at the June meetings minutes. We have any motion on those minutes? Any motion to approve the minutes from June? I move with the acceptable. Oh, Bonnie, you can't. I'll oh, second oh. it. Yeah, you're an alternate. So oh. okay. they're not a voting member tonight. I should have indicated. You can oh, participate oh, in the right. discussion, but. Okay. Is there a second? I just second it. Okay. I note one correction under old business, the first item A. And you get up. Well, I'll. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Line seven after the word could. Uh, I think the word request needs to be inserted there. <clears throat> Anyone else have any changes? We have a motion to, all right, um, any other discussion? Those minutes. There were a couple of votes that I think had already been changed that said 6-0 and they were changed to 5-0. Oppie, I have it as all 5-0. Uh, all in favor of accepting the June minutes. So, John, you abstain. I abstain. There wasn't at the meeting. Okay, four zero on abstention. Um, the first item we have under old business is the um, Snyder Trust had filed a shoreland zoning permit application or placement of gas and water lines and replacement of a retaining wall. We have Dave Cadman here. We had a site visit last week. Thank you. I know at the site visit, I was present, Larry, Dave, and Vaughn were all present. Did you make a visit? I did one yesterday. Uh, Rick did one as well. John, did you? I did not make it. Okay, so maybe on so, this matter we, we would have Bonnie Bonnie, yeah. Bonnie uh, participate as a voting member. Any changes, Dave, from what we observed at the site in terms of what? Would it be possible to add? You know how I talked to you guys about the behind cabin three, you know, sloping that back. That white birch is leaning. Yeah. And I did talk with the site guy. He said, no problem. The owner wants to do it. And her landscaper will come in right behind and replan everything. And, and it would be all part of the original project done at the same time. So you want to amend your application to include, which cabin number is that? Is there a three? three. Um, so, I recall what, what was present there, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's slope coming down, and then it, it just sort of cuts right off. You've got about a space of right. two it drop, feet. drops right into the back of the cabin. Yeah. Right there's about where you almost stopped. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a better shot of down the back, and that's from the other side. So what would be the plan? What would you want to do? Just take 
that, that out and just slope it back. Are you going to put riprap or something back there? Uh, I doubt riprap to probably just replant it all. Oh, okay. So that's within the 100 feet. Is that what yes, we've it determined? Is. It's right at seven five. Yeah. Can you show those to Bill Monaco, who's here from Obviously Watershed? What's there now? Yeah, the back of the. This is all behind. You can only go links over here. Is that the links over here? The right. links that way, the right. other side of the building. Right. 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 But you can, can only walk through a path about this wide, and then right. it goes straight up. You know, and that stuff's constantly coming down. And it, so it's, you know, we could see pretty significant signs of erosion when we... Oh, yeah, it looks like, yeah. Right. I see uh, tapering that back would be a good thing. Yeah. Give us more gentle slope. So, right. That's what, that's what we thought. He, yeah. he indicated at the site visit he needed to talk to the uh, principal of the, the trust. Uh, as far as uh, first moving within uh, the shoreland zone, I always thought it was like 100 feet, any earth moving within 100 feet from a by rule, but um, I don't know if it's 75. Yeah, I thought it was 25. Earth moving, I thought it was 100, but I thought it was any disturbance. Disturbance was within 25 feet. Well, what? Um, I don't know if I have anything here that I can quickly. I have an XGP out on sites right now on Torsi Pond and that they're, they're talking 175, everything else, it's all shifting all the time. So yeah. I'm just, I, you know, I, to me, that's behind the structure that's already within the shoreland zone or within the setback. Right. So you're just trying to prevent further right. erosion behind it. I, I think that to me, that looks even more we have a motion to accept an amendment to the application to include this issue of tapering back the bank behind cabin three. I make a motion to accept the amended application. A second. Any discussion on that? Anybody need to see the service? If we could keep those pictures, Dave, that would be great for the for our file. Before it falls in the house, that one. <laughs> yes. I guess which one of these is three? We get that identified as two and that identified as two. Um, three. That's three. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Which one makes sense? So it's the bank and right down yeah. here. This two becomes two. Yeah. All right. That makes it a lot better. So <clears throat> in terms of a vote on accepting the oral amendment to the application, all in favor? Bonnie, you can vote if you wish, 5-0. Okay. Um, and the other part of the project is, is you're just installing gas line, water line, that's going to be basically following that road cart. Yeah road mm -hmm. and you decided instead of storing up putting in an additional um retaining wall you're going to place boulders yes yeah, just correct? a boulder run yeah right. <laughs> there's no construction of any buildings so do we have any motion on this matter For the placement of the gas in the water line. And and for tapering back that bank. Okay. So we'll, do we accept that? Second. That, that we vote to approve it? Yes. Yeah. Any conditions deemed necessary other than standard conditions? I think during the construction or the work on that bank, there may need to be some silt. Fencing, some it'll all be in place to do the to do the other part anyway. Yeah. So usually we you know require you know appropriate uh, measures being taken mm -hmm. to prevent any 
erosion and um, flow of water toward the lake. Right. And do we feel we need to have any condition of a determination as to whether there needs to be, let me just check the earth moving. It may be included in our authority where, where, where we stand on that or whether we just have to have a determination made whether the EP needs to have some input. I'm sorry to interrupt, but you you guys are having this meeting without video and we hear people talking without knowing who's actually speaking or responding. Okay, the video isn't working. Okay. Okay. It's that it's that number one on the on there we go. Oh, the video is working. All right, guys. Thank you. Right. So it's the chair talking right now. Um, just checking on earth moving activity. I think the maybe the prudent way of proceeding would be just to make it a condition that we make a determination whether any kind of permit is needed, additional permitting is needed by DEP. We can probably make that fairly quickly, but just It's not going to be, I, do you anticipate fill being necessary to be brought in or just to use the material that's there? No, we're hauling out stuff. They're going to be really removing rather removing than stuff. And then, you know, we'll resurface the road with, you know, some gravel just to get the mud out of there after. I think that um, it's a matter of maintaining or upgrading an existing road. That, that's cool. Yeah. I think if you know, it doesn't matter whether you're bringing in fill, if you're taking out fill, if you're disturbing soil, that's a DEP regulation. It's just it's curb runs. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, again, I don't know. I mean, I was a CEO for 14 years and I knew Shoreland Zone pretty good. It used to be within 100 feet, any soil disturbance required a permit by rule. I've been hearing some, some kind of now 75 feet, they changed something. So again, I'd check into that, but. Uh, It seems pretty innocuous what's going on here. It's simply behind a structure that's already within the setback. And it's behind the structure, not in front of it. Right. So it's not like any erosion is going to be approaching the lake or anything. So it's, but again, I, I, mean, I think it would be nice just to check into it. Okay. We'll just make um, the, the, uh, the conditions will be our normal. Storm water phosphorus control measures. The maintenance is exempt. I mean, you, you can maintain whatever you have. Right. right. You don't need a permit for maintenance. But in terms of, you know, there's going to be some work done on the road just to put those lines in. It's not right. going to be very significant, but. Right. We're going to trench down, bury them, fill it back in, and then put a layer of fresh gravel on top. Yeah. Um, so we'll say um, determination of whether DEP approval is necessary. And we can ask Andy, our code enforcement, well, I'll speak to Andy and we can probably get that resolved fairly quickly. And then our standard conditions. All in favor of approving with those conditions? Funny? Yep. Two. So that's unanimous by voting members. Okay. So we'll get a decision out to you and make that determination on whether DEP. Are you somebody going to call me or 
Yeah, well, you'll get a written decision. We'll send it to you rather than to the right. trust. Uh, it usually is 10 days, but right. I'll, uh, we'll try to get it out as soon as possible. Talk to Andy probably on Monday when he's next in just to try to resolve whether we need to have you apply for one of these permit by rules. Okay. Okay. Sorry, can I ask, ask you a question? Sure. Samuel Snyder. He, he used to own it. Okay. No longer involved. Nope. Okay. No, oh. He was the previous owner. We need to kind of reopen to add a different condition, which is we have to have post um, construction photographs. Once you've completed all the work on the lines mm -hmm. and the bank behind that cabin three, we need to have pictures submitted. Okay. So uh, do we have a motion to reopen that approval make, to add that condition? Make a motion to reopen it. Uh, and so we'll add that additional condition. Do we have a, uh, a vote on approving that additional condition with the others we mentioned? So post-construction, just the same as you've just done, yep. uh, but after the work is concluded. Okay, thank you much. Thank you. So moving along, um, the next item is the uh, amended subdivision on the John Capoza irrevocable trust. And before we get into that, um, I just want to indicate um, sort of a preliminary issue, uh, which involves the, the notices on this matter that was sent to the abutter and the applicant after the last meeting. I just want to make it clear that there was no meeting or discussion among the members of the planning board. Um, Acting as chair, I was charged with sending out the notice at the last meeting. And in doing that, we had some information uh, from the town office, the assessor, concern about whether the lot that was being created as lot 3A was a, um, a legal lot. Um, we had also had that preliminary problem of notice to abutters that we knew at least two abutters didn't get notice. So um, we have authority to reconsider any decision we make as long as we do that by the next meeting. And the purpose of sending out the notice putting in this on the agenda just to sort of address that issue of is there any problem with the lot uh, 3a and its access so i and i think unfortunately we're under kind of a time pressure to get this notice out um you know we have limited resources and availability of our um recording secretary so my choice of wording, like the word determination, really wasn't accurate. We did approve this. Of course, we have our normal appeal period, and we do have um, a right to reconsider is why we put that item on. And I know um, the applicant has had legal counsel and has submitted a letter but I think, I'm assuming this explanation sort of addresses any due process or freedom of information issues. Right. Good idea. Sure. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, members of the board. My name is Grady Burns. Uh, I'm an attorney for John Capoza. Uh, and I was the, uh, the one of the drafters of the letter that you received. Thank you for reviewing it. And I, I apologize for uh, the relatively late hour in, in receiving it. Um, the... Uh, I, I want to be clear here. You know, we're we're not um, here to um, try to to pull one over on anyone. You know, this uh, this is um, 
a, a practical issue for us because there's a pending sale for this property. As I know, you know, um, there's been some uh, false starts in um, getting this project approved um, and out the door um, and, uh, with um, some quorum issues. Um, and there's, uh, there's just a very practical concern uh, for us in terms of having a final decision, being able to rely on that decision um, and moving ahead with, um, you know, uh, the plans for these properties. Um, as, uh, uh, as I put in the letter, um, our concern here with um, the uh, adding this to the agenda um, for potential reconsideration, uh, Mr. Chair, you are absolutely correct that the board has the, uh, the inherent authority to, re to reconsider any decision that you make. You can do that um, under your own authority. You don't need any specific procedures on the books to do that. That's certainly true. Um, however, those that reconsideration um, or any subsequent actions that you take on an application that you approve can't, uh, in effect, function as an untimely appeal of that decision that you've already made. Um, the there's uh, the the courts in Maine have been very uh, specific and very emphatic on this this issue. Um, the 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 premise here is that. Uh, an individual who receives a permit or an approval from a town needs to be able to rely on the finality of that permit once the appeal period runs so that they can, uh, you know, do the things with that permit that they that they want to do. You know, and, and in this case here, this is exactly what's happening. There's, a, again, a pending sale uh, and a uh, pending closing. Um, so while it's true that the board does have the, the authority to reconsider a decision, that, dis that reconsideration has to be tied up. Um, and in your ordinance, the window for appeal uh, is 30 days. Um, anyone who has uh, a concern about an approval, and that includes the town itself, uh, or you know, if, if the, the code enforcement officer or another, uh, if, if the select board had an issue with an approval you made, they have they have the same deadline as anyone else. Um, so the what results here is there's a window for the board to be able to uh, take a second look at its decision while this decision is still uh, not completely final, right? The, the, the cake is still kind of baking, that appeal period is still running. When that appeal period runs and no, no formal action is taken, that decision becomes final. And under main law, any person who receives that final decision that's not subject to an appeal or a formal reconsideration, needs to be able to rely on receiving that final permit so they can, they can go ahead and do what they do. Um, and, and the law, the, the courts are very specific about this, even if there's, there was an error uh, in, in the decision, the underlying decision, that decision still needs to be upheld if it's not appealed in a timely fashion. So uh, Mr. Chair, you're absolutely correct that, that the, the board has the authority to reconsider this. Uh, however, um, our, our position is that the, the time for the board to have taken up the, uh, a motion to entertain a reconsideration was within the running of that appeal period, which um, if uh, with the final decision being made on the 8th uh, would have been, uh, I believe, if you count the Monday, uh, this last Monday. Um, that came and went. There was no vote taken. Um, and we need, to, uh, we need to be able to rely on, on that decision that was made in order to, to move ahead um, with this property. Uh, now, if, um, if, if the board nevertheless, despite our, our objections, moves ahead, um, that creates real real problems for, uh, for Mr. Raposa and for the rest of the parties here, um, having to go back through and, and having to, um, if the decision is amended or a new decision is rendered that restarts that appeal period to run, um, that, that will create uh, significant uh, harms uh, both my client and for everyone involved in, in this pending transaction. Um, so this is, uh, we're not trying to um, uh, be hyper-technical here. You know, we're, we're really, this is, this is a, um, a problem that comes down to timing. Um, and, uh, you know, as we said in our letter, um, you know, we, we understand that the board uh, has discovered uh, new concerns about this project. Um, but the threshold question is whether or not there's, there was still time to take this issue up as a board. Um, and, and for the reasons that I just uh, indicated, that, that time has, a, uh, has come and gone. Um, so we would ask that this item be taken off of the agenda um, and no further action uh, be taken so that um, uh, my client and, and the parties involved can move ahead uh, and you 
upon reliance on the, the approval that you already made. And, and I just tell you, our legal counsel is telling us that the reconsideration period ends when we have our next meeting. So that's that's the town attorney's position is that that it is an issue that is can it can be ripe for review or reconsideration. It's, uh, that that was the advice that I received from so of course from which, Jensen and Bear. Which law? So yeah. the so the issue, the question that came up is lot 3A does not have road access. So that's the lot that's the residential lot behind the storage building. Uh, I think there was once access to that back lot that was extinguished. But, but anyway, we won't get into the, no. the discussion. I think the first issue is the issue of reconsideration. Yeah. And um, as I say, the advice I received is that we have that authority. I'm not aware of any appeal. I mean, the formal decision was not issued. I mean, frankly, I was surprised that the plan had been filed before the 30 days had expired. Sure. The, your ordinance actually requires that plan be filed within 30 days of the decision. So uh, that, that that was that was why, but it was done well before the thirty days. It had it had to, yeah, uh, or else it was it was void under yeah. So in any event, that's the, I guess the issue is, do we entertain a motion yes. to reconsider this matter? Yes, I'd like to make a motion to reconsider this matter. And is there a second? Second. Uh, Any discussion? Question. So, yeah. <clears throat> so, why are we? And is it because of? And I apologize. But it was in the last meeting, so I didn't. I didn't get off. But having read through it, is the contention that there were two abutters who did not have input into well, the decision? Or that have was, we discovered a technical issue right. with this after review? As far as I know, no, I don't know if any of the abutters are here tonight. Okay. Um, so that, so then that part's a moot point. Right. So okay. it's, it's just a question whether the access to lot 3A meets the requirements of the, of the ordinance, which they say was raised by, by the assessing office, um, who felt that there needed to be 200 feet of frontage uh, on any lot. And I'm not sure that that's necessarily the case, but that was what was what was raised. And um, from a practical standpoint, you can't sell a lot that there's no need of access to, correct? Well, and, well and, we were creating a right of way through there. Yeah. <laughs> so the first thing, like, let's take a vote on the on the motion that's on the floor. Can we have a motion? Yeah, I made a motion to reconsider. By Ray, made the motion. Larry, second. All in favor of the reconsideration? Bonnie, you can vote because John didn't participate. Okay. Yeah. Five zero. Okay. I would just now. I would now just, we can I would just note our objection. Right. For the record. Uh, so, so you know, given this, if you don't want to go forward with this discussion. On the access, we will give you, you know, an opportunity to either make a presentation or ask for, you know, that this be carried over so that you can submit whatever you want on that issue of the adequacy of the um, access that is, is shown on the plan. So you, uh, so you're saying that you would be uh, substantively reviewing the reconsideration at a later date. It's up to you. We can do it right now. We can have this discussion of what is the access? Is it acceptable? Are there other things that need to be done to make it acceptable? Um, I think, I don't know exactly what your position is 
on this access. I think your client said it's a deeded right of way. And we haven't been provided any deed to the right of way. This no, we will create. So we have to. It's so. It, no, don't. The plan that you have before you were presented created an appurtenant easement to go with the back lot, cross lot three, and it's clearly shown on your plan. So are you considering this a flag lot? Yeah, it would be authorized under the flag lot. The lot, the, the residential portion of the lot, meets all the criteria, has the width for a lot in that area. It has a, will be deeded. I don't want to use the word deed because the deed has not been executed yet or prepared. But a description has been prepared and the description is on the plan. It will be, so the residential portion of the lot will have access to a public road. Now, if I may further say, 10 years ago, <laughs> at that amendment four, you created or you approved a flag lot at that time for lot six. You look at lot six on that plan. Lot six does not have 200 feet of front. And the assessor and the board, the town has allowed for lot six to exist for over 10 years. But we're, but we're talking now about lot 3A. So yeah. it's talking, yes, that's so, correct. So it, it, is this is this a 30 foot? It's a 30 it's foot. Feet. So one of the it, issues that we had, Paul, is that the plan, just so we're clear, what what is the what is the there's no frontage shown. You know, we don't have a a um, a dimension for that on this right here, L29, L30. Those are tag references. When you've got a plan this crowded, you look at those references and you have to come up to these tables. Okay, so what is the total distance? Total distance from here to here is 224 feet. So that's, I mean, this is going to be 30 feet on the road there. So you're so out of the 224, you're taking 30. That's correct. So that, that leaves you with less than 200. But that's allowed on the flag lot. I'm not sure it is. I think but, it is. I think it does. Now, Paul, you're going to have less than 200 feet, assuming you know this happens. How's that lot going to be yeah. dealt with in the future? It's not going to have 200 feet of frontage. Yeah, you got to look at, I don't know, you got to look at 4.16. Mm -hmm. Lot width shall be 200 feet minimum, excluding access. So if you don't have more than 230 feet, you have, this says the minimum corridor width shall be 30 feet and not included in frontage owned by the flag. Corridor frontage on the public road should be 30 feet minimum. So I'm just wondering if if you don't have more than 230 feet on that lot three, is that a problem? The remainder of lot shall meet in on the lot size, but I guess that they're talking there about the flag lot. Yes. Well, it has 200 feet. Well, it has 200 feet, yes. Yeah, it, but, has, it's, but, it has the width of 200 feet. But the, the lot three doesn't have 200 feet with a 30 foot. Six. Yeah, that's, see, that's. So we're, we're talking about 194 one, one feet. 194.6. Yeah. Wait a minute now. Didn't give four feet away. No, no, but that four feet, that four feet, John, it's three point eight foot six. Does not have frontage on it. No, that that additional frontage was given away ten years ago. Conveyed that for the original lot, lot road that was going to come in between lot six and three, which was mm -hmm. a fifty foot access. Right. 
Walker's approach, you know, we wanted that driveway to be on. We gave that to right. them, decreasing the amount of frontage on that lot three. So, yeah, there's, I believe if you look at this, there's 200, 30, 30 is 194, and yes, you got 224 in there. That's on the six feet. That's doing our six feet. So can I go get six feet from an abutter? Oh, yeah. That's the easiest fix. <laughs> They have to do it. Yeah. That's what I think they question in the town office is. I read this as long as the original lot has 200 feet. It takes that it easement across there. It might not be a bad idea because I'll tell you, I've got a problem with the fact that I couldn't find the survey markers on that lot three. Well, one, any new markers have yet to be set. Any markers that were set 10 years are not going to be guaranteed. I don't guarantee that a marker will, will remain 10 years. I don't even guarantee they'll remain there in a month. <laughs> when you try to measure or locate corners on a Particular lot when an application comes in, you need it, you need to know where the heck it is. Oh, well, yeah. And who's out there measuring you know where it is? Now, a surveyor in the state is going to guarantee that a marker will be placed more than the 24 hours if they set that. You're not going to get a roughing block for no. The only way, the only way, the only way you're going to get a bad one is you got to go talk to walkers in an easement. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's kind of too bad that you guys had a month to you do your due diligence for this whole thing. And then after another month, so then another three or four weeks goes by. And then here I am. What happens if I'd have gone and put a foundation in that property? You signed it. Well, you would have to get a building. You may not have been able to get a building permit. I could have walked in the next day and got a building permit because you... No, you had 30, you have, they're not going to give you a building permit during the build, during the appeal period. So it becomes, that I, I don't see that. It's, well, it's, it's standard procedure that, that, that we can't ensure that's that there's not going to. You couldn't say it's standard procedure. It's not in those ordinances. Well, but it, that's what you're going by the ordinance. Yeah. You're telling me that I can't, I need six more feet. Yeah. So is it different? I, I, my question is more practical. The language that you read in the ordinance, is it different because it's a deeded access that we don't have because it's 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 not on a driveway. It's it's deeded access across that. So do we have to subtract that 30 feet? Well, that's what it seems to say. That you've got to have at least the frontage requirement for that lot that's being, you know, being used for access. Right, but it's the same way that it deeded access to like an associate, uh, like down the end of my road. Um, that, that's a deeded access across, but that that's still, his frontage is still whatever it's his right frontage there. is. We're allowed to traverse that 20 feet to get to that, but, and it's mentioned in everybody's deed, of course, but it's still that entire length is still um, uh, 
assigned to that lot. We're just able to access across that. So I just, I, I don't know. I mean, that's, yeah. and that's why I'm just, I'm asking. From well, a I, I think it's, it, I think it's because it's, a, it's, we're trying to keep land being developable by saying it's a flag lot and excusing that lot from the requirement of having 200 feet on a right of way or on a public road. And so, you know, this language may be to take, take into account, you know, that you're, you're burdening another piece of property. I don't know. No, I don't. I think it's fairly standard language from ordinance to ordinance. You know, an easement across somebody's property is one thing, but when it, it, the easement is for road frontage, then that's kind of unique. That's it right there. End of story. Okay. The right of way. You can't play games with, you know, with road frontage. Well, there's a difference. Right. There's, that's, that's my point. Yeah. There's a difference. What are we calling it? Right. Is it a dog or a cat? It's, if this was to move forward, the corridor across lot three will be an easement. Not the track from the road furniture and lot three. So the, there's already a well, that, it, and it's all it's all saying common ownership. There's no there, there's no second, you know, it's not the the access way is not going to someone else by it's not a deeded mm -hmm. access way in, in that way. It's it, it's all gonna be. You know, there, there's a right of access over that strip, but certainly the the ownership is going to be identical as between them. There's going to be someone will have rights of access over that strip. Okay, so what I'm understanding you to say then is the road frontage on lot three is going to stay at 224, even though you've got a 30 foot requirement for the access to so the my, lot. My understanding the 224 is uh so okay 220 yeah because 224 is the total and then you're the, the question is to whether or not 30 feet needs to be subtracted from that right right, right. That's that's correct. Correct. That's what we're calling it at this point i think as to how it's yeah how it would it's be viewed. in this case i think it would be called what what they refer to as an appurtenant easement at this lot 3a would have this easement a deeded easement over lot three. The, the member is correct that the, the frontage the, in common ownership is not changing by virtue of this access way. It will remain well over 200. The easement would be over 30 feet. But is. Uh, it sounds like you're having it two ways. Yeah, I, I, I can't understand that. That's the long and short of it. Well, the. The, that provision only kicks in in certain instances anyway. I mean, we wouldn't even be talking about this if it, uh, for example, if public sewer was being provided. You know, the ordinance is very specific about when it applies and when it doesn't. So, you know, it's, there's no, it's not a question of having it one way or two ways. It's just, you know, it's, it's the language of the ordinance is what matters here, right? And, and I, I think the, the member is correct that there is a distinction. So, so let me, Take it one step farther. So right now, what you're saying is that the common ownership of three and three A. Okay. In this case, so what happens when they want to sell three A? That's right. That's my question. So what I was saying was that the the access way is would remain in in the ownership of that underlying lot owner. Right? When we talk about an easement, we're talking about the that lot itself. Right, the yeah. access way running over it. That land is still owned by the individual or entity that owns that lot. Well, they call it. Right. So, so if the if the other lot got sold, that individual would get rights of access running over that land. But the the ownership of the land would always and forever run with the owner of that front lot. The, 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 the and we the see this all the time. Yeah, and this is. We wouldn't have half houses on the lake <laughs> if it wasn't for this loophole. Um, so I, I don't know. I mean, that's why I'm just trying to. Yeah, I, I'm just trying to look at it realistically, yeah. and um, I don't like to bend things on technicalities either. But um, I, I, 
I have a question as to, I, I don't know that our ordinance, it's, it's, it's I don't know the, the spirit of our ordinance case, and, and this yeah. easement versus deeded access versus Bertraman, I, I don't know. Yeah. This was to fall the way it is currently. We're going to have more grief down the road in this area. Very simple as that. With, with respect, uh, the issue before you today is this issue, um, and the, the questions are, are based on this application. Any any further application that came before you have to be weighed on its merits. Um, but, right, but I think it's fair to also review the fact that what we're, whether we're calling this a, a deeded access or we're calling it an easement um, will depend upon the disposition of that lot in the future. And is this board by action then going to create an issue by approving this? Sure. And then, you know, so I, that's, I, I that's think, my opinion. I think there would be a, perhaps a question if the, uh, if the subsequent owner or someone down the road wanted to change the ownership structure of the access way, right? If they actually like, okay, I, I want to I want to make an out conveyance of this access way. That would uh, that would perhaps trigger uh, some some sort of amendment process within your ordinance um, where you have to go back. But it, unless uh, unless someone is trying to change that that underlying, you know, those lots can could be sold sold to whoever, right? And and that those rights would run with the land. So you would actually have to go in and uh, change yeah. those access yeah. rights, right? So I mean, uh, that the way the way that it's proposed to sit right now would sit in perpetuity unless someone came back to you and said, "We want to change this." Mm -hmm. um, and as it's on the plan, I, I would imagine it would likely require a, a plan amendment. But I, I, I couldn't speak to that. He wants to. Just because it's coming up, it's like that. That's not from that. I've been wanting to do that. Oh, and I wasn't. I, so is the purpose of three is going to become a residential lot? My the underlying purpose, John, is that, and John can elaborate upon it, is that when it's constructed fire, both finance sale, if the lending institutions approach this as a commercial rate mortgage, because there's not really yeah. 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 So, yeah. therefore, we decided to separate the two lots into a residential portion and commercial portion, essentially putting back a lot line that was there about 15 years ago. About taken out in the 2011 amendment. Lots were merged. At that time, John was renting the storage units and living on the back lot. Mm -hmm. Obviously, life moves on. John is moving on. And, uh, 
in looking to sell convey that. So that's what precipitated this whole thing back in March. The only way that we, yes, the only way that we can provide access to the rear lot, the 3A in this case, is through an easement across the front lot. Now, um, the originally, I think, if you remember back to 2011, 2009, there was a 50 foot corridor. It was a proposed road, which was to run between the storage unit lots, what we're now calling the residential lot 3A, and lot six, which is the walk lot, right lot four. 2013, the amendment was older than of lot six, approached John and said, well, we want to own the driveway. We don't want this work. So essentially at that time, Lot six was then created <clears throat> with 30 foot access without, even though it has that, it's essentially a flag lock because it meets the 30 foot requirement to drag and drive the lock way. That's essentially what we're trying to do here. So I think the issue is do they need more than the frontage they have? Or I'm saying yes. Or is the easement just not factored in in terms of the minimum lot size for lot three? I, I say that you know you can't start shortening up street frontages. It's going to hit us right between the eyes. Well, I, I think we're given a document. I think we're we're expected to do the best that we can and apply it. Uh, we we've 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 quibbled more over three feet and six feet with this board in my tenure here than probably we should have. I, I I'm just I mean in this particular instance I'm just not sure that this being an easement instead of a deeded access changes the way we apply the rule yeah. well, according to our orders. Proceed it whatever way you want to proceed that. That's exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> My feeling is that we cannot establish a lesser frontage lot really. As simple as that. I don't care how you cut it. And Steve, you were just reading. I mean, there's there's no there's no clarity. There's, yeah, it, there's some. I mean, it it says the original lot is still going to have two hundred twenty four feet. Right. Do you have the deeded access? Or, no, uh, not no, not no, no, okay. okay. So right, okay, yeah. all right, all right. Part so right. Yeah. always back it up. Yeah, we're going to have a right of way along one lot line to access the lot in the back. So the lot with 224 feet of frontage is still going to have 224 feet of frontage. Right? Yes. And any change to the lot lines would have to go back to you all for a, a subdivision amendment. Exactly what we're doing. Right and this is the same thing that they do. Um, CMP has easements yeah. across people's properties. Yeah. To, and it, I know there's good property in Brunswick. It's the same way. There's, they have an easement across it. But... That's her property. It, That's that is all her property. It's a it's so, a it's a valid point, and I I guess the the language of your ordinance uh, is unfortunately um, a little vague. But the when we talk about access ways, we do talk about any sort of access ways. It could be utility access. It could be um, you know a pedestrian access way. Uh, anything. So I, I think if you're construing your ordinance to say that any access way. Uh, would reduce that frontage. I think you'd end up with a lot of non-conforming lots uh, in in your town uh, if if you take that that view. I think the the more reasonable view is where you know if we're talking about a road like a a conveyed street that is not under the common ownership of that owner, it certainly makes sense that you would reduce the frontage 
uh, from that plot because it's no longer under common ownership. Um, I think here, you know, I, I, I think it's important to keep in mind that this is, uh, you're, you're reconsidering uh, an approval that you've already made. Uh, and I, I would, uh, you know, I would, I would just say, you know, the fact that this is ambiguous, I think is, uh, you know, it, it raises, uh, you know, a, a question of, you know, on, on what grounds uh, would, uh, would a reconsideration, uh, you know, flip that prior decision, I, I think. The fact that this was reviewed initially and then given approval should be given some weight when you think about how you're construing the same. But I, I think the if, if you if you read that in such a broad way to include any any easement, any access way whatsoever, um, you would start slicing and dicing a lot of lot lines um, and, and reducing frontage on on any lot that has. Uh, a water a, a water main a CMP uh, a CMP line um, or, or anything of that nature. Uh, for that matter, uh, you know. It's, uh, so I, I would just uh, again I would I would ask you to apply your ordinances in a way that that is um, reasonable is uh, you know, could be read logically you know to match kind of the reality on the ground um, and won't create um, kind of illogical. Oh, yeah, from a practical standpoint, when this is mapped out, okay, we got to look at this on a parcel map. Mm -hmm. All right. If this were deeded access, you would show a strip going to lot 3A. Yeah. Okay. An easement, you're just simply going to see lot 3A. You're not going to see, you may see reference to the easement. Yeah. Or you would see reference to the easement. Maybe like a hash one. Yeah, there might be a dotted line or something to show an easement interest no. to serve an interest no. across lot three. If I, I don't appear to use the word D, but if this corridor was to be separated and become part of lot three A, then I think the arguments are valid to say no, the frontage on lot three is being reduced below to lot C. Right. In this case, we're not. Frontage on lot three at 224 feet, it will plus it will remain at 224 feet, but but that northerly portion of the lot will be subject to the rights of the back lot, lot three. And that's all I need. I'm in drive. Yeah, I'm just yeah, and, and that's and that's kind of where I'm landing at this point. Is I, I just I'm trying to be practical. What do you think? No, it's a it's, it's an easement, it's not a road. It, it's listed as a meeting on time. Yep. And it, the term appurtenant, I'm sure it's probably, as you all know, but just to clarify that, appurtenant means it's going to run with lot 3A. That's all. Which means it doesn't matter who, who owns the land, it just it, it sits with the land itself. It's, it's a right to whoever who owns the land. Yeah, you will have the right to cross lot 3. Yeah. So should we move the question then? I make a motion to accept the application that the access is an easement and by the ordinance is still considered lot three A still has over two hundred foot frontage. So that the frontage of lot three is fine as it's laid out well, on the plan. As long as it's just an it, easement. As long as it's an easement and not a deeded right away. Right. Right. Any second to Larry's second. motion? Any further discussion on this? Yeah, I think because you didn't sort of participate at the earlier meeting. So all in favor of Larry's motion? Opposed? Two passes. All right. So we'll go forward with issuing the formal written decision. Then. I think it's good to have this discussion that we've on the record. Sorry, and it seems a little more difficult, but the discussion needs to Okay, we'll move Thank on. So we're here on the 
Thank you. Elbethal, Trust, or I don't know if it's Arthur. Yeah. Well, the, the owner of the property yeah, is Elbethal, your trustee being Arthur Elbethal. So again, we had a site visit on this last week at Larry. After June 29th. June 29th. Yeah, all right, two weeks ago. Larry, Bonnie, Dave, and I were at the site visit. You went on your own. Ray went on his own, and I went on my own. So as I understand, you have submitted two permit applications for the street. Yes, process. obviously. There's, in addition to the permit on the shoreline form, it from FEMA is required to amend the flood has designated flood hazard area across the property. They have the flood, a hydrologic study from Maine DOT when they size the culvert under Route 135, which states that the 100 year frequency or the 1% 1, 1 frequency flood only come to an elevation just under 187. We're asking FEMA to remove anything above 189 from the flood hazard area. That would then allow, because under your shoreland zoning and the resource protection, you cannot consider a resource permit in a resource protection area for portions or parcels within the flood hazard area. That would then remove that out. So the application has been set up for FEMA. I've only compiled all the documents for FEMA and they will be submitted electronically. The FEMA application takes about 60 days. Sometimes they're more expeditious, but I always, our clients figure 60 days. The other permit that's going to be required is obviously we're crossing a wetland for the sea crossing. That's the because it's the estimated fill area in the wetland will fall under 5,000 square feet. In other words, from zero to 4,999, it's a tier one application with DEP that will be submitted probably next week. Um, so like that. So I'm guess, wondering whether it makes more sense to table this until you get those, per I mean, it's not like getting a permit by rule that we often. Well, I am so advised by client that yes, I think the best that we can expect this evening is to have the project table. In other words, you don't take final action right. on it because of, you're not filling it. Personally <laughs> and professionally, I wouldn't expect you to act yeah. on it, but we do not want to outright deny it. Right. Right. And, and you, we have already had a site visit. We've already sent notices. So I think it, you know, I think that's a, a reasonable. And that way we don't have to go through the shoreland provisions when you want to build a road in a resource protection area. I mean, because that can be addressed in your well, NEPA permit. It really. will, one, yeah, it would be addressed under the DEP. Yeah. So, I mean, as you witnessed from your site visit, there is a buildable site. Right. On once you get once you get beyond right west. So um, I mean that, I, I advise my client about that too. Well, on that clientele yeah. feel that he's going to be able to put in a sub waste system. He has a, and it's in your application, if you did find the applications, he has a preliminary soil evaluation. Okay. Yes, it is nothing more than an auger hole, but it indicates that yes, there are adequate soils available on site. Um, that's so a very yes, small he piece of be able to get a subsurface disposal system. Yeah. Yeah. That is a small thing. Entertain a motion to table. I make a motion to table it. Second. Motion by Larry, second by John. Uh, all in favor of tabling? Okay. 
as soon as, as, soon as, as you get that information. We'll head to the town office. All right, great. Okay, next item. Uh, Bert Langelier, am I saying that right? The Langelier here tonight? Yes? Is there any reason for Bert being here? Well, yeah, he wanted to put a foundation under. Uh, we haven't reviewed this, it's on the agenda. I had to amend the agenda because two items were left out. I sent everybody, I think, a copy of the amended agenda. Okay. Well, that's happy for folks. I didn't see it on the agenda. Yeah. Well, they didn't match it up with it. Yeah. I, I think Dorothy and I had a miscommunication, <clears throat> and two items were left off the draft agenda, which was this one and Mr. Korea's matter. He's here. So we'll Mr. we'll just table. we'll table yep. yeah. Mr. Langelier and get a hold of him for the next meeting. Yep. Call the motion. Make a motion to table it. Second. All in yep. favor of tabling. Okay. They may have been confused. No, the agenda that's on the website does have his. Okay. It does have. It. Yeah. All right, Mr. Korea. I think your proposal was to. Put in permeable pavers between Beach Road and the front entrance to your home. So we kind of sent out notices to abutters. Um, the only disturbance will be putting those pavers in, right? There's no change to your building. Um, except, uh... How is that view? Does that change the phosphorus that particular law? I mean, uh, I mean, I, I'm kind of uh, I would recommend permeable pavers as the best management practice under a lot of conditions. I don't know if it, if it would even uh, uh, be characterized as the impervious surface being permeable. If this, uh, I don't know how DEP. Use this in the impermeable pavers, whether they're per, impervious or pervious. So uh, it's certainly not something that I would consider going to be generating runoff if it's permeable. Uh, these are you know, recognized good best management practices for putting in driveways and any more walkways or anything. Else. I told Steve, it seems to me like this is, this is a no-brainer, really. Yeah. And it's and it's and, and Steve and I'm not sure I, I don't I've seen a site plan, but my understanding is these are not going closer to the lake than a structure. They're going between a structure and a right. road yeah, coming back. Yeah, so like uh, even if they were in purpose, you can yeah. even if they were considered a structure, yeah. as long as you don't go over the and, and impervious, they're probably not going to increase the imperviousness of the lot that lot being a, a walkway and not a driveway. So. Is, yeah, they usually limit it to four foot one. Now, this sounds like a really good idea. I mean, number one, if, it, if the per, if permeable pavers weren't there and you're walking in and you got soil that then will have erosion, or you know, this this will prevent erosion, it's more stable, stabilize the walkway. So, yeah, it's probably a positive. Yeah. I'll like yeah, take a motion. Thing. Take a motion to accept it. Okay. Standard conditions. Condition. Post, post, uh, post construction, construction photographs and, and normal soil silt fencing or whatever. Is there, you think there's a required bill that we have silt fencing to put those in? Or? I have a feeling they're going to be put down with very minimal soil to start. Yes. It was pretty flat. Yeah. You're not I, didn't hear yeah. Well yeah. Put these in. I drove by, I you know, cross the rock under them or whatever, however they put it in, there's kind of gravel base. Yeah. So I think standard conditions, which are which are more that you know you just have to do the construction within a certain period of time or request an extension of the permit, and um, then when you're all done, you bring into the code enforcement officer some photographs showing them in place. You're good to go. We'll we'll issue a written decision to you. Uh, all in favor of approving it. Five zero. 
Very good. Thank you. So all, all I got to do is now is talk just wait you. for a written decision. It should come to you in about a week or 10 days. All right. Thank you. And you're good to go. The, the, these two that weren't didn't make the agenda. Lane Julia, just one. Yeah. Okay. Well, it did make the agenda. Yeah, but I mean, initially. Right. That was a mistake. Well, it shouldn't have. Yeah, I mean, I I meant to tell Darcy send me the agenda that you do before you sent it out. Yeah, but because once I looked at it, I could see there were two items missing. Yeah, but the reason they were missing is miscommunication between her and me. Oh, okay. okay so yeah, um, we forgive you. Because I kind of sent a little email, which I, I did a couple of them and then said, and then those other matters, but it might not, might not have been clear. Yeah. Um, but he was here at least, so um, hopefully, you know. And we told, the, you know, even at the last meeting, we told him to come back yeah. for this meeting, but I, I don't know if he... Call the town off. I mean, I went in the town office on Monday and told them to make sure anyone came in that they got the right agenda. They said they would would do that, but it's on the cal. The, the right agenda is on the calendar. See, I I don't bother to look at the town website anymore because it's next to use. Plain simple as that. Okay, moving on. So until they do something about that damn site. Well, we're going to continue. I, I went into that copy Monday and doesn't have those two. No problem. Well, you probably went in Monday before I went in. Yeah, yeah. Probably oh, did. yeah. <laughs> and I had already sent them, and but but I went in like at five thirty, and said make sure people come in get them, and I had emailed you folks. The email had the right agenda on it, so you should look at the emails I sent. I, <laughs> I look I at your emails. I, I, you know. <laughs> You can't open Adobe? I, I can't open Adobe from my phone. Oh, okay. I can always see the email, but any okay. attachments. And the attachments will open. All right, moving on. Moving on. So we got a uh, pre application uh, discussion, which is new business. We're on a new business now. And I think we have some gentlemen here, Mr. Rowe, among them. If you want to come up to the front, that way. Yeah. Is this the new? This what? This is what we said. I don't. Yeah. Does anyone else need a copy? So thanks for coming in, especially when we have sort of a a major project. It's always good, I think, to. Come in and discuss it before you kind of invest a lot of time and energy, and then you kind of if you have questions about how the ordinances work. It well, sounds like yeah. what you're proposing touches on uh, the shoreland zoning ordinance and our comprehensive ordinance, which includes both site review and subdivision. So, if you want to give us a Again, just an overview of what you're hoping to do. Okay, so obviously we're That's under all. contract um, right now for the uh, Packer slash Robinson Road night step run down to uh, Cotton Walking at 300 feet of uh, water price, 300 feet of share. Um, what we're looking for is uh, commercial permitting to um, subdivide a few lots down on Robinson. You want to see help us fund our uh, creation of a potential campground on from the Packard Road side. Um, the nice thing about that law is I don't think there would be any shoreland disturbances because we've been down bottom. There's no access to build or rebuild, so it'd be further closer to the road. Um, but uh, that's basically the permit where we are seeing if we can uh, obtain is a commercial permit to build a campground uh, on that lot. Is that a so what, what? A commercial permit to build, or if we need a commercial permit to build a campground on that lot. Okay. So first of all, okay, so there's, I think you said nine, about 98 acres yep. or so. 
And some of it you want to have like a residential subdivision? Yeah, so there's um, obviously Robinson Road is a very family campground, like uh, not campground, but there's family campsites down that road, camps are owned down that road. So, it, you know, we wouldn't want to access anything from there to disturb that road. Um, so that we were able to sell a few of those lots. Why don't we create a buffer zone for the people already living there and the people that own camps and stuff to keep that away from, uh, you know, tourist traffic and, and you know, and it creates that buffer zone for the project itself. Um, and then for us, it just helps us fund the bills um, it might be important to note that Robinson Road um, is is owned by the 98 acres, so any any traffic on there is is owned by everything that um, that the 98 acres owns. Yeah. Those six subdivisions would be off of the six proposed subdivisions would be off of Robinson Road. So yeah. Nothing would touch the the main road, Correct. except for our driveway into the campground. Yep. And, and so, oh, so okay. Yeah, and what kind of campground? Uh, campgrounds come in about six different yeah, flavors. Yeah, looking like family campground. If you've ever been to Beaverbrook 20 years ago, or you've been down to uh, River Bend, um, that's basically what you're looking at. You're looking at 200 rough sites, and maybe potential for more. I think we have listed there three. Um, we have um, it, it's it's just a family campground. Your tent sites, your year-round sites. Um, water yeah. 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 It would be just the stages, of course. Yeah. Yeah. As funds go, it's the stage. So the subdivided lots that you're going to sell, how how big are those lots? I think oh, whatever, well, I think whatever actually, I don't know Monmouth Town. Um, I know that some towns have different size lots that you're allocating, right. like at what footage. Yeah. Like if you guys say 200 feet in the front, um, that could be for driveway purpose, but whatever the legal lot size would be, would probably be the lot size as we can see. And we have um, uh, right into the particulars right there. We that's just beginning stages of what we're planning on doing or hoping to do. Are those program. lots going to be individually serviced for uh, wastewater? Yeah, I, I would I would hope so. Yes, they were all soil tested. Yeah, I'm sorry. Soil tests are they were all soil tested and are eligible for for leach field. So does a perk test for each other? Correct. Yeah, we did do that. So our, I think our, our major goal today, tonight, um, other you know, talk about pre-application, what applications we need, and and that sort of thing. Um, so our we're under contract for a thirty-day period, so it's it's a very very tight window for us. Obviously, in thirty days, we can't get an approval and and all that sort of stuff. Um, and we we try to get a longer a longer um, contract to slowly. So that we can close on, you know, sixty days when we get some of this going. So, so our goal, to, one of our goals tonight, is to just kind of get the feel of, of the planning board. Is this is this something that you would um, a good idea? Do you think do you, do you like the idea? Is it something you would hope? Yeah. Um, is it something that you would would like to move? That you think we should, we could move forward? Be just before we. So we don't want to. We don't want to. Buy ninety acres, so ninety eight acres of land, and and you come here with an application, and you say, "Hi," ah, you know, and then then all of a sudden we own ninety eight acres of land that we can't. This will have this. This will generate, shall we say, a good deal of discussion. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And we've we've discussed a lot with the town people. Mm -hmm. We've actually talked to Jim, who lives on the road, and then they also like we just kind of the HLA on that road um, about that. And their only concerns, if you've ever met Jim down that road, was. Uh, no low income housing, that was his big But other than that, like they're very nice people. Um, one thing you talked about too was how do we help the town with that? So a lot of consensus with the town was um, Beaver Brook. So Beaver Brook is not Jellystone. Jellystone, yeah. Jellystone, uh, yeah. I'm a local, let's see. Uh, Jellystone uses Monmouth as, as, as where they're from. But all they're the access roads yeah, are owned by Monmouth um, but their their tax dollars are going to lead, you know. So all those roads that are being used and damaged mm -hmm. are coming out of the fund. So we've thought of ways of like, you know, environmental fees on sites. You know, uh, get a dollar tax for your site, but it all goes towards uh, Monmouth Public Works to maintain the road um, to help with like EMT services and like that. Somehow to bring back something so that a road is damaged on in front of the campground. So, is the access center this 
off the paved portion of the yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, right off pack. So if you if you're coming down, say 202, you're going to turn on to Norris Hill Road mm -hmm. and then uh, turn right, so, on the yeah, right on the pack of road. So it's, it's about 0.3 miles from there. So from 202, I, I'm going to I'm going to assume one I think yeah, it's one mile. So I think that's um, at least on the second. The back four pages will show you all the potential routes that take back roads and aren't the major routes. Um, the, the longest of those routes would be under three miles, which would be all back road. If they were to jump off of 202 up towards North Marvin. I think, I think so. Yeah. My, my guess would be, and obviously I don't know, um, 202 on to North, on to Packard. So you have a one mile from 202 to get to the campground. Yeah. yeah. That, 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 the reason I'd say that's probably that would be the main route for it. And campsites, are you talking about pre-built cabins? Or are you talking about people dragging their glampers in? Or? Yeah, I think it, it'll, it'll be a blend. You talked oh. about putting up yep, yep, uh, cabins. Um, you're right, you can bring the campers Thanks. in. It, it's whatever you know, uh, <coughs> a local small campground. That's basically what I'm doing these days. I think also the distance from the road, too. So, like, uh, I uh, found a few town hall as we opened the scrapyard up north, and like it's all about um, visibility to what people don't want to see. So like you wouldn't want everything on the edge of the road. These lo locals are driving by and they're seeing people out there with their clothes hanging out there and they're camping and all that. We were going to put it beyond the knoll. So the only thing you see from the road is a sign, and even the uh, landowners there be a buffer zone so that no one would see. Any of that, you just know there's a campground there, and uh, visibility would never change. You can see the nice tree line. I think it's important to note too is they already logged this entire property about yeah. two years ago. Yeah. Um, so we would just follow that path of least resistance for our roads, yeah. and then obviously just work with what we already have on the lot rather than right. cut down major amounts of trees or anything like that. What would the visibility? Oh, what would the visibility be from the other side? Um, of you know, the lake side. So that's a that's a good question. So um, there's there's a bunch of swamp land right up leading up to the uh, water. So in order for us to access that 300 feet of uh, access that we have, not the shared access, the shared access we wouldn't be um, wouldn't be using. That that's not anything we're interested in. Um, so we would have to build a uh, bridge system to get there um, in order to be able to utilize the water. So bridge system is not. Um, and then, so that's so if you're standing on Monmouth Beach looking, mm -hmm. it's kind of around with a little little hook. You might see a piece of a dock. If you're right out in front of it, you'd see you'd see a dock like any other any other type of. Uh, but it just it doesn't have a solid shoreline when you're going to have no, a little bit swampy in that area. Where the, 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 the wetlands started uh, start, they stopped logging. So we have probably a solid 200 feet of trees. We'll have to build some sort of walking path. That just takes the path of least resistance. It's a tricky, tricky little bridge. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so the, the marshy section is in the 300 foot. It is, yeah. yeah. So the 300 you, feet that we have access to isn't. It's not a beach. It's not. Um, yeah, it's a it's it's on, it was, yeah. But have you have you approached EEP on that about no, the we, bridge? This that? is this is our first our first meeting. We haven't we haven't um, talked. We haven't gotten that yeah. far. Okay. I, I think our, our our biggest our biggest thought is with the planning board. Um, post this idea so that we can we can purchase. If you're if, if you know you're all like no horrible idea, then we probably don't want to purchase. The there's, a, there's another proposed campground in, in Mamas that had the same type of frontage, mm -hmm. and that and that didn't fly. It got shut down, huh? Even with walkways out to it and just. Yeah, they were it, huh? they 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 were going to do the same thing. This was back a number of years ago, but. They, the DEP just went no. Sorry about that. I can't do that. Yeah. See, in addition to our approval, I think a project of this size is going to require DEP uh, review. You think? Uh, uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, probably. Um, Especially if you you have to put in walkway. Different projects here. Yeah. yeah. I see a subdivision. Of yeah. One. Small. That's separate. Yeah. You know, so the subdivision, you, you you take off the acreage from the subdivision, ten to fifteen acres, whatever. Cool. That's a separate product. That is going to go under subdivision review, requires stormwater and phosphorus study. Right? Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Then you got the commercial campground that will require similarly a stormwater and a phosphorus plan. 
control. And what I'm hearing is that there's a good portion, the lower 200 feet to the water is mostly wetlands. You can subtract that acreage out of your, your phosphorus budget because those are not developable acres because they're wetlands. So you don't get credit for that in your phosphorus plan. Uh, and I've been also hearing about we're going to do it phases. Um, so that's an idea. I know. I'm just saying, but if you come in and you get a stormwater plan, you're going to be approved for that plan. Oh, okay. And then you come in, you're going to have to amend that plan again. And if it's mm. a DP or here, it'll have to be, keep getting amended every time you want to expand. Um, so I, I don't know. I mean, they ask for the whole thing. thing. Yeah, the the thing. I mean, this, this is all I've had to look at. That's yeah. all you guys have submitted so far. Uh, I don't know. Are, are these are these sites? Are they gravel pads? Um, how much how much roadway are you dealing with here? I mean, to access three hundred sites, if you're adding new roadway where there's no roadway, that also creates stormwater considerations. And then the perviousness. If it's a gravel pad, compacted pad for RVs, that also takes in, that also generates stormwater concerns. As for the lodge, and it says in here that the lodge, the plans. For the lodge will be developed after approval. So the lodge size is going to be part of the approval in the imperviousness of right. the I, I, It might have been, might have been a cycle, but I, I think we obviously want to approve before right from the lodge and you're like, yeah, rip it down. We don't we wouldn't want to spend the money on, on something like that. All, all of the plans will be so again, you know, like our we, we haven't submitted an application yet right. yeah. because this, right. we just we just want we we only have a we have a tight window to find out if we want to spend four hundred thousand dollars. No, I'm not. I'm not. I agree. Yeah, 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 that's that's kind of we more of getting the feel in the idea. Like if we can't access, I, I think and I'm not speaking for the for the else here. Um, but if we can't access the lake, that might not be the end of the world for us. Um, we our, our major idea here is is having a camp having a camp present. Well, well, first of all, subdividing uh, certain sections there on Robinson Road, and then the interior having having a camp. But one thing accessing you, the lake may not be the big issue. It still may be the extent of roadways that you're putting on the amount of land that you're in and that are developable of your remaining. 80 or whatever yeah, acres you would have. You're going to subtract out of the developable land of those 80 acres anything that is either steep slope or wetlands from a phosphorus and a stormwater consideration. Mm. Then what you're left with is how many acres you have from you're allowed to export phosphorus on a per acre basis to a lake. Okay. And it's based on how many developable acres you have. And the fewer acres you have, the tougher it is. And you're going to subtract out those whatever 200 feet back. That amount of acreage, and it's probably, I don't think it's really super steep in there, is it? I don't, um, it's weird, it's, 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 it's like a double ridge line, it starts yeah. high, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. you got that two ridges that come in, it slips in there, say, uh, yeah. uh, what do they call it? There's, there's, there's like a brook. small brook that runs perfectly <laughs> down, the road. right? But it, but it has to be like acres of contiguous steep slope areas, not just here and there, like steep areas, oh, it's very down in the center, yeah, from about 500 feet all the way down. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, even uh, if you even if you're conservative there, you take out fifteen from ninety eight for the six houses, leaves you with eighty three. Even if you're kind and you say you lose ten percent, now you're down in the mid to low seventies. Wetlands out. Take the wetlands out. You're never going to get two hundred campsites. So we uh, once we map it, you. you if you ever take a ride out to like Lagoons, River Bend, or or Jones, oh, yeah. Yeah, no uh, a tent site, let's say, they, they want something like 10 per acre. So, um, mm -hmm. depending on what you do there, you're right. If you only have 30 acres there, obviously it's not going to be all of that. But if even 10 of those acres you can put 10 sites, you're still talking about 100 sites. Um, oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a, a, a tent site, but that, that's. When I'm hearing your cabins and and you know people dragging their 45 foot mm -hmm. triple push out, um, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I just it, it'd be interesting to see the math to see how much you can actually get on. I mean, it just seems to me as if uh, a little um, preliminary work to look into what the stormwater phosphorus. I mean, yeah. 
Those are big hurdles to overcome. Yeah. I've been in Cobbesy Watersheds District. I've been in Cobbesy Watersheds for 30 months. Paul, I've been working with Paul on, mm -hmm. on the other end. He's been doing a lot of development, on creating plans for development. And uh, um, trying to get something uh, um, established or decided wants a scale. <laughs> very, very like yeah. yeah. Right, Paul? Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I may. I know the property pretty well because I surveyed on both sides. All right. I actually have surveyed down by the way. So, and Robinson Drive is a well constructed road. I mean, it's Robinson property. Bonnie, you know, Charles Henry Robinson, mm -hmm. his yep. family, his heirs, and then Charles Henry was the road foreman for many years in Monmouth that he built one heck of a road going down here. Yep. I mean, it would probably be better than some of the town roads. <laughs> I make no joke about it. But um, in the wetland down at the bottom, yeah, that's a significant wetland. Mm -hmm. like, again, it's the uh, survey there. Uh, I am the Prescott Air Zone in there, just on a little piece of there. Yeah. 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 The, the difficult thing for us is without a plan, you know, seeing layout, it's it's hard for us to say. I mean, you you would you would probably be able to get a subdivision for the residential lot. That, that you know the, that the that. But but your problem is, you may not want to. If if your real goal is the campground, you might need that acreage to be figured into the campground phosphorus uh, allocation. Anything around our lakes, that's that's the big issue is the stormwater and phosphorus. How much, how much what we call the impervious area are you creating? Especially and, for Cockawagan. Well, yeah. Because Cockawagan has not been removed from the state's list of impaired water bodies yet. It has been greatly improved. We've invested a billion dollars in it. Two alum, nutrient and activation treatments, two alum treatments. And phase one, phase two, and phase three of doing upgrading Robinson, Pine Drive, all those roads worked with people with cost sharing to improve drainage and correcting erosion problems to get the lake to right now. It's it's back to being pretty darn clear where it had their peak soup again. And so it's like, but it still remains on the state's list. There's only like 30 some lakes in a whole state of Maine on the impaired water body list, such as 303D, and still on the list. That's not been removed. So it's like it's going to come under some scrutiny, not only from us, but also from DEP. So, and I think the acreage, the size of the campground, is definitely going to kick it into a DEP project. I don't know about whether Jellystone is in a DEP. Uh, yeah, they they we haven't heard back from them since they put yeah. in there. That's an expansion to an existing yeah. campground. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah. So the question is, is you know, we give a thumbs up, a thumbs down. There's still a lot I don't. Yeah, yeah. Probably. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. You know, you got so enough land for your board. subdivision. That, but that you know, again, it's how you configure it, yeah. and whether there's an internal road or you're accessing yeah. all your sites from Robinson. So my guess is a, a six lot subdivision on up to 15 acres, with no creating no new road, just all driveways coming off of Robinson. Probably should be no problem in these six lots. That's just my guess. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know exactly what the per acre allocation, how many pounds of phosphorus per acre you're allowed, but I did talk to Wendy, and she's been working with us in Cox's watershed for 48. I've been there 31 years. We've been here almost 80 years together. Yeah. But she didn't have the number. Well, she didn't tell me the number, uh, but the per acre allocation she thinks is still somewhat uh, considered generous. So it would be, it's not as strict, let's say, or difficult. To develop a subdivision on Cockawagan as it would be on Anabesta Cook. Yeah. So, uh, and if you're not creating new road, you got two acre lots, let's say six on 12 acres or whatever, six lots. Uh, my guess is that's pro probably would be doable. Pretty easy. That's my guess. I, I think that was that was our first and foremost question is is that possible? Because if that's possible, then buying buying the land is is uh, probably a good idea for us. And then and then work through the the progression of a campground if it happens it happens if it doesn't it doesn't but the, the 
to the um, purchase of the land is really really kind of hangs in the balance of can we subdivide or not? If we can't subdivide, then the then there's no point in even thinking about a campground because we need to get through that for portion first. If if you're saying if you're if if I feel like as in what it sounds like we're leaning towards, yeah, that that's that's doable. We can do some good plans and all that sort of stuff, and we got, we'll get two thumbs up, and then we can work on our campground as a as a second thought, and that that. Like, so that's, and it's a timeline to review something like that by the time you guys go through EEP and everything else and it comes to here and we hold hearings and if we were voting on this at this time next year yeah, that would be quick that would that might be quick yeah the, you know, you're gonna far, get, you're gonna get some here. probably you know there'll be people who will be strongly opposed to it if it meets the requirements the standards of the ordinance, we should approve it. So um, but ask that's real quick. the question, you know, yeah. it's yeah. it's the number of it's the amount of development that you end up doing and will the land sustain it? You know, can you when you treat your stormwater and phosphorus, you know, sometimes you have to take remedial actions and put in wet ponds and berms and things. Um, but that's hard for us to, to gauge. At this point, but the, the subdivision usually, you know, you end up with what's say on a two acre site, you're going to get a area in which the development will be allowed. You get like a window that you've got to show on your plan that this is where someone could build their house. And and if yeah, there is a new house going in there somewhere on Patrick, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, if you're single family, un unfortunately, single family don't have meet the same standards that lots within the subdivision do. But, uh, but the other thing you probably have to consider about being clear about is what your what your plan is for the shore frontage. Now, granted, you don't have an area where you're going to make be able to make that a beach. But if it's going to be accessible, is it accessible? What kind of accessibility is there to it? And will that have people dragging their kayaks down? Or are we talking about boats? And if we're talking about boats, we're talking about docks. We're talking about docks. We're talking about campgrounds. We're talking about marinas. Um, all of that. You just got to kind of think that. But yeah, there's, there's ideas and thoughts, and, and really all that's a new point. Of, so that's that's I think the, the initial intent after after talking um, about just just coming here and finding out like uh, you know, just kind of I get the pre approval I guess before we actually submit an application mm -hmm. before we buy the land and then submit an application that that sort of thing yeah sure. so to give you an idea like there's you know a, there are commercial camps you know for kids uh, on Cobbacy and and one of them recently requested an expansion. And some of that expansion was in wetland. And they they needed to construct, I think they were bridges built. Which one was Kippawa. Kippawa. And they had to get DEP's walkways. approval to put they yeah. they were able to put walkways okay. to access through the wetland. But yeah, DEP had to approve it. But again, that might not have been a very extensive area. Um, and, that, and their so, expansion was not that big, and that no. that did stir up. Well, the, yeah, that a bit, I, a bit of hornets. Yeah, so many variables. Tipoa, there, right? Tipoa is is by your definition uh, a campground uh, is different than a campground, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. It, it's, it's more a summer commercial camp. summer camp, yeah, yeah, as opposed to campground for like tents and things like that. So this is an allowed use um, in shoreland zone period where right. expanding Kippawa, they had to expand that zone uh, right. for another lot or create yeah. a new zone. Uh, in, uh, so the, the reality was it created more buildings, it brought more people and it still stood up a hornet's nest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but they did get DEP approval for these, you know, to be able to kind of access through the wetland guys. But again, they may have been different in character than what you got. So the, that's probably the big thing you're talking about here is like uh, initially we should see what bought us in that area. Yeah. So if, if DEV comes in and says, hey, for the uh, phosphorus, for the plugins, if you're saying that, um, 
and they say, yeah, you can only use 10 acres, then you have to sustain your points. Yeah. They're going to have to survey it before they can do that, right? Yeah, they're going to need a, yeah. a plan. And yeah. It's it's hard to yeah. hard to move forward on something like you're proposing without engineering. The, the six blocks that you're looking to do, what type of frame is that? Oh, uh, it's all right. So I mean, well, what I, I just give this gentleman a card. I only have a couple cards with me. Uh, I would at least suggest giving me a call, and I can look at the per acre allocation, look at what I think an individual lot would, let's say, export from a phosphorus standpoint. Look at six lots. Look at the Cockport and watershed, and say, you know, is this going to be something easy? Number one, I can't do design. I can't just review it for you guys. You're probably going to have to submit a plan with calculations to us at least the Cobbesee Watershed for the planning board to say, okay, you're allowed this much phosphorus to be exported to the lake based on models like you know, rooftop exports so much, lawn exports so much, gravel exports so much, pavement exports so much, a little bit less than gravel. Mm -hmm. And we just have to run the numbers. And but I can't just run the numbers for you and say that it's good because I'm, on, I'm at the re review end, not the planning and proposing end. So uh, you, you probably have to at least uh, 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 submit to me a plan uh, based on the methodology. And I can give you guys all the references and things like that and where to get some of that stuff. And, um, you know, and I can't go out there and recommend to you who to hire to your contract, your consultant or anything. Um, I can't do that. So we're a government agency. So I can't say, well, hire this person. So. There are people out here who do that. So, unfortunately, you're not going to have all the answers you're looking for in 30 days. We, and, we, we, we honestly didn't think we would. Like, like I said, really, we just wanted to know: is it is it is it a dead in the water? Like you, you're like absolutely against the idea, um, or or is it like we, we don't we don't system? we don't review it like that. We yeah, we, we, we can't prejudge it. Yeah, we can't prejudge it, and we when we vote to approve these things, it's not because we like it or we don't like it. Okay. it's either it meets okay. the ordinance so, yeah, I, or it doesn't. Well, that's that's right. another another point of, uh, I guess a, a thought is is um because mom the floor camp crowd, I guess you know is, is that is that something that that's able for us able, that, that we could be able does to does it do? require a public hearing? It would require. Oh, a public yeah. hearing. Oh yeah, we would have to have a public hearing. Oh, yeah. sure. Would the citizens be able to vote on it? No, deny, deny or stop it. No. Um, I don't know. No. Um, I don't think they. Oh no, actually, they have a petition. <clears throat> we've never had that come up. No. Um, as Dave mentioned to you, there was one proposed on Cobbesy that was through quite a process, and they eventually withdrew it. So I think if you know if, if you're saying yes, we can subdivide some acres, and then we can potentially you know just look at whether we whether we want to move ahead. Uh, head what do you want to do with the remaining acres? Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. Right. So you, do you, do you want to make it into a campground, or do you want to subdivide in, into house lots? Right. Yeah. Exactly. What? But if, if we have the if we have the oh yeah, you can you can go ahead and subdivide on Robinson Road, which kind of sounds like. Sounds favorable that we'll, we'd be able to do that, and then we can make our decision on whether we want to purchase the land. And that's really what we need to kind of get the idea of: should we purchase the land, or should we not purchase the land? And it sounds like sounds like to me that we probably should purchase the land, but we're just going to sell it um, and then and go from go then then play it out over the next year or so and get it all worked out. And then another question came up. Yeah. 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 I don't know, if, Steve, if you looked at Yeah, I, I tried to find about common access to, let's say, the 200 feet from six lots. Mm. I know that in some towns, uh, you, uh, if, if let's say there's some back lots on a subdivision or some common <laughs> frontage, um, the uh, access, a deeded access to that frontage uh, is based on the number of lots. I think it's usually like maybe 200 feet for the first lot, and then 25 or 50 feet for each additional lot. You can't just have like a 200 feet of frontage with 30 watts in the back yeah. and that have 30 families going down and just right. you're killing the front the, the front of the lake. Right. The short I, I don't know what the dimensions are now, but that's similar to what, to what's happening over at Hoyt Drive. And some of the people right along the lake have access to that. Right. And a lot of people back and that have 
I guess it's they're lack of a right away. Yeah. Action. yeah, they haven't needed right away. Yeah, no, neither. I mean, again, this is. Uh, I, I didn't see a restriction in the Monmouth no, I ordinance. I went through. Yeah, I mean, yeah. somehow this came up before, and somehow you know there was some figure for a num per number of lots. Um, and I don't know. You know, state shoreland zoning controls over our ordinance. Now the state has approved our ordinance, so I'm assuming there isn't something in the state ordinance. We don't have uh, chapter one thousand is strictly guidelines. Yeah, um, if that's not the ordinance that you it know, may be that. everything that's in those guidelines. Yeah. So, um, well, Winthrop has Winthrop has restrictions for the number of uh, uh, or the amount of frontage needed for lots, and I think Manchester does as well. Mm -hmm. that run into that on Pond Road in Manchester with lots on the other side of Pond Road. Back in like 30 years ago, almost Bailey Hill subdivision was going to be on 135 and went from the affordable housing in you know, Narrows Pond, uh, Upper Narrows. Uh, only seven of the 100 lots in the affordable, you know, big cluster housing, only seven lots could have frontage. So they said, we don't even want to let anyone have frontage. And, but they were paying taxes, so they gave it to the Winter Utility District, which used the pond for drinking water as a conservation easement, so they didn't pay taxes on it. So, but I don't think I, that's a that's a town ordinance issue. I couldn't find anything, Stevie. I said I couldn't find I couldn't anything. find anything in Monmouth that has that kind of limitation. But um, let's put it this way: um, if there isn't a limitation, and you go to public hearing, and people on the lake know that there's going to be like 300 campsites. Mm -hmm. That are going to come down, and everyone's going to have access to 300 feet of shorefront. A lot of people complain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. be a lot there of noise. 600 people down there on the waterfront on a day, two people from the campsite. So it, it, that's going to be something that's going but to that, be. But that's why I asked what their access was going to be because it doesn't really sound like they're going to be. No, that's a bad We pour the uh, it's water from the out of water, thing. and it's not. A beach access thing, so what it's more like a kayak or a paddle you know, kind of. Know, obviously, in our plans, we already have like you know, a little pool on site because of the fact there is a beach access. So yeah, this isn't this isn't beaver brush. Correct. Yeah. So that three hundred feet of waterfront is nice if you can put a trail and maybe, like you said, someone wants to bring a fishing boat or whatever and park it. But other than that, yeah, you're not going to have four hundred people in the water. I think it's more it's conservation of land and type uh, an amenity type of yeah. thing where you can go hiking. You can. Yeah, and walk the path up they to the water. It's a nature. Correct. Yeah. On the lots that are going to be subdivided, you said they're going to be on the Robinson. Reasonably level. Yeah, right yes. So we went down um, again we went with Jim, who I guess his family owned that property prior to the last sale. Um, and they already had a couple lots already parked out. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a nice gradual. Um, and like I said, you take a ride down as soon as you pass Jim's lot, there's a little bit of noise, and you'll start seeing the lots open up. Um, yeah, pretty level down there. Uh, not a lot of work would be uh, if you would be putting those lots. In. Yeah, I was just curious because you know that goes, it's constantly you know created correct. down. Yep, correct. So, is, yeah, but like I said, with the previous development and the lot, nice uh, somebody went in and put that like we all parked in one lot with our trailers to, to okay. access. And would this be on the right and left? Just the right guy. Uh, Just Nate, the right. Nate owns the left. I think he's the head of the uh, HOA of that road, is, is how he put it. Nate Bowler. Correct. <laughs> yep. And he owns, I think, like 48 sides. So it's only uh, that that land is only the right side of that road. Heading down to it. I know there's yeah, like five Robinson people drive, if I may. Robinson Drive, one from the northerly boundary of Robinson Lane, not over there. So. You have the northerly boundary of Robinson Land, we have Robinson Drive, and then you have the undeveloped land. Yeah. So it, it only be on one side. Yeah. yeah. And there were about five people uh, that were interested in purchasing a subdivision. They just couldn't afford the full 98 acres. And, and one of those was Nate himself. Yeah, you know, Butler. Nate, Nate Butler. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so your lots along the road, you know, if if you're using Robinson, uh, you, you, each lot has to have 200 feet of frontage. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, you, you, even if, uh, if Robinson is just, in, that shouldn't be an issue anyway, but uh, Robinson is owned by the 98 acres. So even if it's privately, uh, private 
clean, dry, yeah. and then you still have to have okay. it. Yeah. yeah. Unless, that might, that unless you do off. some type of cluster development, which probably means you got to have an internal road. Okay, or, or maybe multi but I, I think you only talk in the face, like you know, like yeah. you said, once you get into cluster, then you start getting into some bigger problems there. Um, yeah, the lots would be whatever uh, mom and town says a lot needs to be to sell. You know, a buck feels like three acres. Again, I don't know what mom is minimum size lot is, but it would only be along the face of Robinson. Hopefully we've helped you in some ways. Yeah, even <laughs> help. I mean, we had to have a starting point, you know. Yeah, yeah this was our starting point. Well, I you right. take a ride. Um, you don't think it would be a problem to add a driveway on right. Packard Road, though, <laughs> if that were to be? Well, you know, it says if you look at six point seven point thirteen of our ordinance, it says access to develop. <clears throat> All development shall be de designed. <clears throat> to minimize the number of public access points onto public roads. Now, this isn't a public this road. Isn't a public road. <laughs> so, you know, that what that addresses is like, like out here on Academy Road, you know, you would encourage an internal road with the lot access off if you have one access point. Private road, you don't have the same sort of requirement. As far as like, um, or if we were going to do the campground down the road, we were thinking about our, our own private driveway for that campground. That would be right off a of pack oh, between Robinson and Pine. Pine. Yeah. Would that be a possibility to add that driveway or would that be shut down? No, you'd be allowed to have access to the, the, the campground a lot. Again, it's part of your phosphorus and, you know, yep. if you've got the land there. Um, There'd probably be requirements for how that would be constructed, you know, that yeah. it engineered properly. Um, but you're not dealing with not dealing with a public road, so that may make it somewhat easier, you know, whether you is there a road, there's a road association for that Packard Road. Packard Road is public. No, Packard Road is uh, public. Uh, uh, it's Robinson, Robinson, Robinson Drive. Drive. Yeah. Robinson, we own Robinson Drive. We buy yeah. this property. God, it's an easement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. And on that note, <laughs> and also just to point out that if they're um, uh, associated with 15 acres or whatever, six lots. That's common area, part of a lot that kicks in that we will have to be a homeowners association according to the ordinance. So now, there's there. already one there. I know that's a weird question, but uh, Nate was saying he was head of a HOA. If there's already one there, do we still have to implement another one? Probably because your because your lots are not part of their home association. I don't think it's a so real it's HOA. weird because I, and, and I don't want to you know make this any one of this, but um Robinson Road, which is weird. If you look at the lot, the lot actually is the purchase of Robinson Road. Like it, it's included in that. So then what happens to Nate's HOA? Is it now? Uh, yeah, you know. Dr. Lawyer, yeah. man. Okay, yeah. 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 Right. They, uh, must, uh, they must have some kind of ease. Poor Nate, we're like, hey, thank you for helping us. Uh, uh, you owe us money now for the road. Like, yeah. that easement. There must be an easement <laughs> for the, <laughs> oh, for the people who use that road if if that yeah, lot owns. Sort of lots down on the lake steep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I believe Nate Butler acquired. He, he obtained a piece of land that got. It's like beforehand, correct? Yeah. yeah. But he acquired it because I noticed that when I did the first survey for his property, then I went back in later. I noticed he had a driveway off the rock. He didn't want to come off of. Uh, yeah, he comes in off. Yeah. What's the one that? Lives down the uh, oh. pine. Um, one just before. Yeah. Uh, no, pine's off the edge. Yeah. No. Cochran. 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 Yeah. Cochran. Yeah. Yeah. See, you can see for it coming off of Cochran. Uh, you do. You like to come in off. Of, uh, you know that um, everything's contingent on what DEP says we can and can't. 
depending on development of the subdivision as well. Yeah. Well, the subdivision doesn't have to put the deed. No, right. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Let's have some division. Stormwater plan be, by yeah. stormwater plan by Covency Watershed. Yeah. The EP doesn't get involved in small subdivision. No, nope. but uh, it depends on the scale of your campground. Um, you get into clearing of land. I know you. Some, you guys said. Well, some said it was. A lot of the land's been cleared already. Uh, uh, well, the water probably hasn't been cleared. Yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, no, you had to write the before side by side. But, you know, the thing yeah, is, the thing, thing is, is that, uh, you know, if somebody can own land and uh, come in and clear it without applying for anything, just do clearing, and then someone else can come in with a stormwater or a development, say that, uh, these are grandfathered conditions, and this is the way it already, already was. <laughs> and it's like, it's no, it's it's actually it's the condition of the land post nineteen ninety seven. Essentially, that these people look back at. Um, I mean, I think if it's been cleared and then turned into lawn or something, you know, you own the lawn. It's like it's not like uh, you're going to be assessed phosphorus for the lawn, even if it was done five years ago. It's uh, anything past nineteen ninety seven. New disturbance. <laughs> a property owner can't go and change the land um, without going through regulatory hurdles and then have someone else come in and say, I want to do something that then all of a sudden is regulated, where the other activity wasn't. It's like they're 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 part they're, they're part of the same right there. It's like um, I, I think they went in and they harvested that it, it, I don't think that's looking like an 18 it, it's probably going to be like regrown it will quite easily be regrown. Uh, it's just going to be regrown. I, I think they went in and cut yeah, yeah. we're going to find the selective or you're going to find a whole bunch of splash yeah. down there yeah. okay regeneration yeah. is fine yeah just yeah. If, if, if it's left left to regrow it's as good as a full force as far as we're concerned Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody, for your time. Yeah. Okay. Good luck. Okay. We're not repeating. I don't repeat. Feeding every now and then. Is there is there any time for public comment? Yeah, that's just where we're going right now. Just going to ask: Is there any public comment tonight? Yes. Um, I'm Carol Branning. I'm the president of the Anabesicook Lake Improvement Association. And I'd first like to say thank you to Bill Monagle for being there and um, explaining the stormwater runoff and phosphorus and the complications of developing a piece of property with, with wetlands and a small section of shoreland zone. And that seems very concerning to me. Um, I also want to express some concern about the, um, the characterization of the Kippewa um, issue as being stirring up a hornet's nest. What it did was bring a lot of educated and concerned citizens to the forefront to express our concern and to express how we wanted to take care of our lakes and how we didn't want things to go in a bad direction. And both the boards and Monmouth paid attention to our concerns and certainly did quite a bit of adjustment to the original Kippewa plan. And I appreciate that. So if you want to say that it raised a lot of public concern, that's appropriate. Stirring up a hornet's nest is not. Any other comments from the public tonight? Yeah. The enemy road uh, subdivision that Mike Bullett did across the new open. We had someone come in, didn't we? Yeah. We have two fellows come in. Or... Yeah, that, that one fell through. That one, so it's somebody different? Yeah. That was Brian Wood down here off of now Linwood Drive. Thank you, Bill. They Bill. were going to put a park yeah. down here, but when they <laughs> got that construction, <laughs> the park houses, which were over a million dollars. No. But I have another client um, who interested in that one. Question that I have, he doesn't know whether to proceed as approved with, with the senior housing, in other words, reduced lots, square footage and building sizes and stuff like that. Or if he would, he's thinking of maybe doing a mixture. So I guess the question I have, I can't find an answer in the ordinance, 
Is it either all or nothing? Is it all senior housing or can he do a combination? I think he might have to come in for an amendment. I don't well, know. He, I'd have to clearly, look at the- clearly would have to be amendment, but yeah. not before we proceed too far. Could, he, would, could he do it is your yeah, question. I, I no. think he could. Uh, yeah, well, that's the question. It's just, yeah. Can he do some, say, the, say that so many front lots or something like so much of the, the senior housing and then the back at two, three regular- not I don't know why you you couldn't. I mean, they control it. I mean, I don't I don't know that I'd have to look. Is there a condition of approval that says senior housing only? Or was that a covenant that he put on the no, property? It's senior housing because it was approved under that section of the ordinance that deals with multifamily housing. Well, multifamily. Or not multifamily housing, but that provision, I can't remember the right title, but there's a provision in there. And that if you use the senior 55 plus livability, you can get a reduced from 15,000 square feet down to 7,500 on a lot. Um, so he's stating, I mean, it would be on sewer and water. So the minimum lot would be 15,000. Is it, is it was be, because it was considered cluster? Something uh, I don't uh, there, I don't remember that yeah. there's a specific yeah there designation is. like senior. Yeah. Now I think we're going to be forced in Monmouth to look at some of the implications of the uh, workforce housing is workforce housing, yeah. which may open up some land for. But I understand. I, I can't like, cite this section, Steve. Yeah, I can't remember. But, uh, I know there's a provision in there that if you designate it as a senior housing development, 55 plus, you could have reduced lots on it. It goes from, I think, 15,000 to 75. Well, maybe we got to look that up. Yeah, I, I, I remember that conversation yeah. because when that was originally here, we were discussing that. So he's, the person that I'm working with is thinking of buying the development obviously buying the land and buying the development. It, it never proceeded because of the economic climate at the time and Mike was just not in the land development. Uh, well, I'll take a look through and see if I find something yeah, or maybe I mean, more of that. I was going to go talk to Andrew on it and say Monday yeah. of that, but I don't think Andrew's... Andrew well, it would it'd be a matter if he could find the paperwork. Oh, I have all the paperwork. But yeah, those other two individuals who came in on that. When I ran the numbers on them, what they changed was they were going to do away. Didn't work for them. I mean, okay. All right, but just be aware of that. I'm not sure how it's, it's probably going to be Well, I mean, of course, sale sign was still there with. Yeah, he, Show, showing the small, showing those small that, lots. Yes, that is. Yeah, he's been negotiating with uh, Mike Willett's real Yeah, yeah. And that's still asked me. He's asked right me right several right different questions. Right across from the old control school. What? Right across from the old control school. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right next yeah. to the new wall, wall field. Right. Yeah. 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 I, still, I still think that's a viable. Oh yeah. Uh, that's a that's a fantastic idea for it. So, but it, it would be obviously if you reduce some of the lots, it's going to improve the uh, phosphorus. No more calculations. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. You, you know, cut down the length of the road. All right. Um, so I had put on the agenda election of officers, but I think I was premature because. That will move to the next meeting because um, we have three terms expiring. So for the next meeting, whatever the select board does. So John, your term is up. Dave, your term is up. My term is up. So I do have a form if anyone wants one. No. Um, I have to change. Yeah. I'm so the, the select board, I think, is going to review this 
at their next meeting, which would be not next Wednesday, Wednesday following, because then we'll have our meeting in August. So we got to have, uh, I mean, if everyone else was here, um, then we would have enough for a quorum, but three of us are out. We kind of, and I have been convinced to ask for another term. Despite, <laughs> despite <laughs> apprehension, some, some misgivings. Yeah. Okay. So, so with that, I think we can, I mean, I just haven't had time to kind of put something comprehensive together on the select board would like a new fee schedule. And we started to look, I think Ray's done some digging, I've done some digging on what are the other towns doing and we're getting all this feedback that escrows are a problem and we should build them into our fees and how do we do it in an equitable manner. But I think some of our fees are low, like a, a application for a shoreland permit, we've basically been charging 50 bucks. And that should be Extremely probably 150 at least. You know, we're trying to pay for, you know, what we're paying Darcy, help with the code enforcement, you know, stipends if you're still collecting them. It's no longer a stipend. Right. Uh, so actually if you didn't turn your paperwork and you don't get paid anyway. So well, I haven't uh, done anything. Yeah, yeah I haven't I, done anything and I'm not I'm not gonna so. bother. It's not worth it to me. Uh, do we does it cost us when Bill comes? No. Well, no. he they have or to be if charged. we pick or if we pick up the phone and consult with him or oh, what is, uh, I'm just curious. Well, you know, there are some times that they ask for a review fee. Yeah. And we probably should have that conversation with them again mm -hmm. while we're while we're looking at this. Yeah. Um, no, it's great when he comes, and um, you know, Andy said he tries to listen in, but he can't always do it. The new code enforcement. So I try to talk to him on Monday about what happens because he, you know, people come in and looking for stuff, and so I'll try to keep him in the loop. So is that the decision that they made is he's not going to attend these? Yeah, meetings? they just did. Well, I don't know. It's a, I haven't got a clear answer as to whether he really wants more hours. But it's one meeting a month. So, I mean, if he doesn't want more hours, he can just deduct it from his hours during the week. Yeah. I mean, it just, it, it just, to not have your code enforcement officer at a planning board meeting, I, I don't see the, yeah, it, I don't the, see the sense in that at yeah, all. Yeah. We went in, Ray and I went in to make a pitch and the best we could do is to get Darcy at least to kind of help us keep paperwork and everything in order. Thank you, and keep us in order. Um, I'm trying, but <laughs> it's I, need, hard... I need to be able to act. I'm going to direct access to his brain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Plug in so I can... No, you don't, go, you, well, you, you don't want, you don't want that. Uh, no. Well, he can filter 